In our Earth's 4.5 billion year history, it's faced plenty of catastrophes, been pelted by meteors, both large and small, and had its surface purged of nearly all of its indigenous life, only to have new life forms evolve in their place. Though many scientists think that Earth's geological history is largely random, a new paper claims that Earth has something of a heartbeat or pulse, and that extinction events seem to happen in tandem with it. No one knows why the Earth has this heartbeat, but the paper attempts to offer some potential solutions like plate tectonics, cometary impacts, and even Planet X? Yeah, you heard that right. But before we jump into the meat of this paper, be sure to drop me a like, comment down below, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of The Man Without Hands, and this is Science Get. Our planet has a long history of extinction events, both on land and in the oceans. Many researchers have attempted to make sense of this activity, thinking that the prevalence of these extinction events has been at least somewhat random. But just as the Earth revolves around the Sun every 365.249 days, there appears to be something of a pattern to these geological events. Now a new paper by Michael R. Rampino, Ken Caldiera, and Yu Hong Zhu aims to narrow down this activity as a cyclic pattern that functions like a heartbeat or a pulse. The work is the result of a spectral analysis of 89 well-dated major geological events over the past 260 million years. Rampino and his colleagues sampled their data from some of the most recent geological literature. These include marine and land-based extinctions, as well as ocean anoxic events, which are periods in the planet's history in which the Earth's oceans were depleted of nearly all of their oxygen, creating extremely toxic waters. But that's not all. The paper also looked at continental flood basalt eruptions, sea level fluctuations, plate reorganizations, global pulses of interplate magmatism, and changes in the rate at which the seafloor spreads. It's an extensive list covering a massive period of time. The aggregate of all of these 89 cataclysmic events appears to indicate that there are 10 clusters of events that all share a common cause. These 10 catastrophic clusters seem to be spaced out across this 260 million year time span in periods that vary anywhere between 26.9 to 27.5 million years. But as for what is causing these extinction level events, that's a totally different can of worms. The paper makes cases for geological processes relating to plate tectonics, mantle plumes, and even astronomical cycles associated with the Earth's orbit in the solar system and the Milky Way. While plate tectonic theory suggests that climactic events involving major eruptions could be caused by various geological processes, as well as activity pertaining to large mantle plumes like the one beneath Yellowstone National Park, researchers aren't 100% certain if that is the cause for this quote-unquote heartbeat. According to Rampino and his colleagues, earlier attempts to establish a clear cycle were hampered by limitations in dating technology and techniques. Now, those techniques are far more accurate. The team also fully admits in their paper that the geological record could be a fair mixture of periodic and non-periodic events, such as asteroid impacts like the one that killed the dinosaurs, for example. So efforts were taken to extract the potential signals from the quote-unquote background noise of the geological record. Rampino's paper talks about several other studies and papers that suggested such a cycle, though they also dunked on those papers for not being accurate enough in the process. Or as the paper puts it, their work lacked quantitative rigor, which is the nerdiest way to put down someone's work, and I kind of love it. That aside, previous papers seem to estimate this cycle as taking place every 30 to 33 million years. The new study, however, sought to update estimates thanks to the presence of better data and more accurate dating techniques. Table 1 from the paper shows 89 total climactic events involving 29 global sea fluctuations, 12 marine extinctions, 9 non-marine tetrapod extinction events, 13 continental flood basalt events, 10 major ocean anoxic events, 8 changes in the rate of seafloor spreading, and 8 global pulsations of interplate magmatism. These results were tested and retested repeatedly, the extent of which you can read about in the actual paper, linked in the description. 
But what about the causes for this activity? That's a bit of a complicated subject, because we're talking about a lot of different, but related, geological and climactic activity. A lot of these events can feed into each other, which is part of the reason why they're grouped in sets of 10 for the analysis. The connection between tectonics and sea level oscillations is suggested to come from changes in directions and rates of the spreading of the seafloor and the subduction of continental plates. We all know that plate subduction causes earthquakes, but the earth has been known to consume all of a continental plate in the past, in fact, there is at least one being devoured in the mantle right now. Beneath the west coast of North America and Canada are two plates that geologists call Farallon and Kula, though there is a third one in Europe that is somewhat controversial. Even the separation of Pangaea and other supercontinents throughout the Earth's history have been linked to this cycle. In addition to this, these tectonic events can affect the atmosphere, changing the climate thanks to mass eruptions or the eruptions of supervolcanoes like the extinction event that preceded the Jurassic period, something we talked about in another video we released recently. The link between volcanic activity and the depletion of oxygen in the Earth's oceans is pretty easy to see as well, but that doesn't fully explain this pulse. And other explanations, such as a complex relationship between the Earth and the rest of the bodies in the solar system, have been suggested. But personally, thank you, computer, it sounds a lot like a procession, a geological procession even. In speaking of processions, some researchers even think that the Earth's position in the Milky Way galaxy may also play a role in this cycle. Remember that 200 million years ago, the Earth was on the other side of the galaxy, so who knows what the solar system may have run into in all of that time. But some researchers are thinking a little more local. Well, not that local. No, as in Planet X local. P.S. NASA quietly redefined Pluto as a planet again, so Planet 9 is now Planet X again or Planet 10. Caught up? Great. Link to that article is in the description. The idea that some mystery planet could be lurking out in the far reaches of the solar system, waiting to wreak havoc on the Earth every so many thousands or millions of years, should be very familiar to you. Conspiracy theorists have been warning of a doomsday planet since Zachariah Sitchin mistranslated a bunch of Sumerian tablets and started claiming that Earth was seeded by a bunch of aliens who ruled over a planet called Nibiru that returned here every 30,000 years or so, coming so close to the Earth that we could see it in plain sight or something like that. While the conspiracy theory is total BS, the idea that an object like Planet 9 or Planet X, as some researchers prefer to call it, could cause mass extinctions periodically is totally plausible and it doesn't require the planet to come anywhere near the Earth either. Planets in the outer reaches of the solar system take an extremely long time to complete their orbits. Pluto, for example, takes 248 years just to make one track around the Sun, and objects even further into what's known as the Kuiper Belt or the Oort Cloud could take even longer. One researcher suggests that every 27 million years, Planet 9 disturbs objects in the Kuiper Belt, hurtling them toward the inner planets in the process and causing mass extinction events like the one that killed the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Though it's important to note that no scientific paper exists supporting this concept, and this is just... Yes, it's exactly that some fun bit of speculation. That isn't to say that a paper won't be coming in the future to back this up, but I think it's safe to say you should take this with a grain of salt. But at least personally, I don't think this means that Planet 9 or Planet X has an orbit of 27.5 million years. That seems like a huge leap from Pluto's 248 years. But there are a lot of different objects in the Kuiper Belt that we can't see with our telescopes. Remember that it's been suggested, based on evidence of microlensing events out in the depths of the solar system, that Planet 9 could be a primordial black hole. And if that is the case, that could mean that it hasn't fed on material in a long time. Perhaps every 27.5 million years, this orbit takes a primordial black hole in contact with orbiting comets similar to our asteroid belt, and the chaotic exchange sends those comets hurtling toward our planet. Again, remember, this is speculation. None of this is verified. However, as for the Earth's heartbeat, the data speaks for itself. The Earth does appear to have some kind of 27.5 million year cycle that also seems to coincide with mass extinctions. But when was the last one, and are we due for another one of these quote unquote pulses anytime soon? Well, you can relax, because it appears as though we have about 20 million years left before another one of these events takes place. Unless we take matters into our own hands and cause an extinction event ourselves. <laughs> 
wait. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below what you think of this study. Do you think the Earth has a 27.5 million year heartbeat? Do you think it's Planet X's fault? And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and check out the Patreon while you're at it. Speaking of which, look at all of those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. It's because of people like you and Top Tens and Simon Whistler that we are at this point, that we are officially monetized on YouTube. And seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for supporting the channel, hitting those like buttons, ringing that bell, subscribing, and to Simon and Top Tens, all of those people for supporting us. It took seven months and 64 videos, and the work was totally worth it, so thank you. Anyway, that's enough of me gushing. Uh, I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.